So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, The Freak, you know? Yes. And so I had spoken to Ludwig and he was telling me, well, actually, the, the funny story that was old, always told for me from Rolf was that Ludwig had created an escapement, yeah. sort of with, with two escapement wheels to have a symmetrical impulse directly on the balancier uh, in a carriage clock. Yeah. And he kept coming to Rolf and saying, can we try this escapement? And Rolf would say, look, 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 look. But the Swiss anchor is fine, it's perfect, exactly, it's so yeah. reliable. You know, it, it's, it, but, but then, when you guys started creating the Freak, because the escapement was on the top of the watch, just underneath the sapphire crystal, he thought, ah, this is the time for yeah. the escapement. Is this how you remember it? Of course. Uh, you know, the, the Freak dates uh, from uh, 1999. And at this time, we were aiming for this now that to return to the status of manufacture. But of course, just purchasing a milling machine and milling bridges uh, out of brass, traditionally, it was something that anyone could do. Yes. But to make its own escapement, yes. it was just a step above, a step further. And uh, I was very happy to see this uh, ID from Ludwig of this escapement because I, I found there the possibility to do something else than uh, me too, Niva Rocks product. Yes. So uh, I convinced Rolf that yeah, let's go into this uh, development. Yes. But of course, we came to the, uh, the conclusion that with uh, traditional materials, brass or steel, yeah. this escapement would never work. Right. Is, is it because it, because of the two escapement wheels you have double because, the inertia? Yeah. It was the original freak escapement, the dual direct, yes. which had uh, the disadvantage to have five teeth, five active teeth per wheel, yes. so that makes ten teeth. Yes. So that means the acceleration of the wheel until it catch up with the balance wheel to give the impulse was 36 degrees. Right. Huh? 360 divided by 10. Yes. And for that you needed a very low inertia for the wheels. To speed up and the stop. speed up. Yeah. So we first tried to prove that uh, this escapement would work with a light material. We made um, this escapement out of aluminum. Yes. But we knew that aluminum would not be reliable because it was too soft. Yes. And uh, then I discussed with uh, my friend, uh, the teacher, the Ecole d'Ingénieur, uh, Michel Vermont, and yes. he told me, but you know that you can make uh, uh, micro mechanical parts out of silicon. Wow. But I was familiar with silicon because I used to work for a Bourge Electronique Marin in the electronic circuits. Yes. So for the microelectronic, it, I was familiar, but for micro mechanical parts, not. So I said, good idea, I'll go to the CSEM and try to convince them to make some samples for me. And we tried, and it was a start. And then uh, four months later, we launched the Freak with this new technology. It was very risky yes. because uh, everything was new. The, the concept of the escapement was new, the yes. material was new, and the technology to, to manufacture the part uh, was new. Yes. But uh, we saw both Rolf and I that it was opening a new era and the use of this technology, the, the selective photolithography, which allow you to make any shape. Yes. And the cost of the part doesn't depend on the complexity of the part, ah, but just uh, on the surface occupied on the wafer. That's incredible. So that make you, you could uh, uh, let the engineer uh, get wild with uh, new ideas and impossible to make parts with traditional technology became possible to make. So it was going to stimulate all the imagination of uh, every engineer, not only the ones at Ulysse Narda, but yes. uh, e everywhere. Uh, so it was really fantastic. When, when you first um, put these silicon wheels inside of the Freak and you saw it come to life, and you saw that it was reliable. How did that make you feel? Well, it's, it was fantastic. But it was an era where, with uh, Rolf in Ulysse Narda uh, and my role in the technical side, because he was the president and he did the general management on the price positioning, product decision, distribution decision. Yes. And I was in R&D, fabrication and uh, manufacturing. Yes. Uh, 
It was so complimentary and uh, easy to make decisions. Yes. It was absolutely fantastic. The, the speed of the development yes. at this period of uh, Villiers Dardin was absolutely amazing. Did you ever feel that you and Rolf were taking a risk to have this new material, to have this new escapement in a, a wash that would be? Uh, you know, if you are a very big company with uh, 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 an enormous turnover and so many customers around the world, like Rolex or, or, or big firms, you could not run this kind of risk. Uh, only with uh, uh, sub-brands or I don't know, uh, uh, we would have done it. But with Ulysse Nardin, we were already with the reputation of making things that the other don't do. Yes. Uh, it, uh, the perpetual Ludwig is also a, a very new yes. uh, system to yes. make the, the uh, perpetual calendar. Pierre, I remember this you know, fantastic spirit of innovation at Ulis Nardin when, when Rolf bought this company um, and you know you would see products like the trilogy, you know, with yeah. with the astrolabium, you know, or or the GMT plus minus, or as you were saying, this perpetual calendar uh, made entirely using gear wheels, so the date and all the information could go backwards or forwards. I mean, and then the Sonata, you know, yes. an alarm watch with a countdown function to it is extraordinary. Yeah. But the Freak is something really, really special. I think it, it's a watch that may, might be maybe even the, the most important watch of, of that, that period because it created an all new way of, of, of expressing time because you have a movement that gives the indication of time itself. You have an all new escapement and you introduced this amazing material that has now revolutionized the watch industry called silicon, right? Yes. So, so when, can we say that, that this experiment, that when you went to, to go speak to Vermont, right, and you went to go um, experiment with these, these silicon wheels, and then these wheels ended up in a commercially produced watch, this was the birth and introduction of silicon in the Swiss watch industry, would you agree? Yes, of course. Uh, it is true and uh, we were small and innovative so we could run this risk to uh, introduce it. It went very well with the spirit that uh, Rolf wanted to uh, put into uh, Ulysse Do you, Do you remember the launch of, of the Freak in 2001 at the Basel Fair? Yes, I it, remember it, it was went. With uh, Regis uh, playing yes. and, yes. and with uh, Ludwig playing the flute. Yes, uh, yes. But it was also, it sent shockwaves through the industry. Um, you know, collectors went crazy for this watch. Yes, they yes, wanted yes, to yes, have it. Um, everyone was talking about it because it was so innovative. But then you also had some people saying, oh, but now they put plastic inside of the watch, you know? Um, and, and so were you, did you feel satisfied when uh, several years later, uh, Patek Philippe started to use silicon as well? Of course, uh, it's fantastic. It's uh, a recognition of this material. Uh, you know, uh, in French, uh, silicon and silicone are very similar to pronounce. And many people not knowing the raw material, they don't think that silicon is glass. They think it's plastic. Right. But in fact, it, it's a very pure material uh, and uh, fantastic uh, physical properties. Yes. Uh, elasticity as well, as it's prove, proven by uh, uh, the use for the hairspring. Yes. Pierre, when I, I look at the Freak, and it's celebrated now, it's 15th yes. anniversary. And uh, you know, with all the different versions, the, the initial one with the dual direct escapement from Ludwig, and then in 2005, the, the dual Ulysses that had every tooth given an impulse. Uh, and to today, there's even a tourbillon version, the Diavolo, which is the first freak with a small seconds indicator as well. I, it's very emotional for me because it reminds me that the spirit of uh, Rolf Schneider is still alive. Uh, would you yeah. agree? I, I fully agree. I, the Rolf spirit is very important, but you know, he needed also the ideas of Ludwig. Yes. And my uh, contribution to the industrialization of those ideas. So in fact, it, it's the spirit uh, and this uh, trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, an amazing Because you, you need it, yes. yes. A amazing. team uh, with a, a so fantastic uh, decision process, which was very quick based on the trust. Amazing. You know, when I first met Rolf and I was coming from a big group and uh, I was making uh, a proposal of reports with Excel sheets and things like that. <laughs> and uh, when I came to his office and uh, I said, did, did you read my report? He said, okay, okay, uh, tell me what you think. Right. 
and I expressed with some emotion, probably some passion, yes. and he said, okay, let's go. Do, do you feel... Yeah. Uh, like it was fa absolutely fantastic. It was a period yeah. of 15 years, absolutely. That was like a, a golden period. Yeah, you know? yeah a golden yeah. period. For do you think, feel the industry is maybe missing a little bit of, of this nowadays? Uh, Too bureaucratic, maybe? Yes, of course. Um, I think uh, smaller companies can behave like that. Much bigger companies and bigger groups cannot quite the same. It's, uh, it's a, a matter of size. It's a matter of being fully independent or within a group. Could a watch like The Freak have been born today? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. No. <laughs> a very honest answer and as always a great pleasure uh, spending time with you, Pierre. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.